are you writing, Dexter? My diary. I didn't know you kept a diary. Well, it's only recent. It's going to be the backbone of my memoirs. Yeah, it's all here. Names, dates, places. I'm going to write a book, make a fortune. Do what? Yeah, it'll be a no-old-barred expose of MI5 by a crack agent. By a cracked agent? Let me see. <laughs> Every incident will be described in minute detail. The political intrigue, the danger. I'm blowing the lid on the entire cover world of British intelligence. Why is last week blank? I lost my pencil. <laughs> Oh, by the way, there's no D in subterfuge. Isn't there? No. This says subterfuge. <laughs> Hold on, what's this? You were never in Beirut. Ah, oh, well, I, I may have elaborated just a teensy bit to spice things up. A teensy bit? I've heard of being economical with the truth, but you're being downright miserly with it. <laughs> That's right, you'll be head of department by chapter eight. Eight? You'd really wait as long as that, would you? <laughs> Look, as far as I'm concerned, Peter Wright's book was only the beginning. Mmm. Well, yours is the absolute end. Oh, no. <laughs> you can laugh. There's big money to be made from these things, you know? Absolutely. As long as you're prepared to go and live in Australia and wear a silly hat. <laughs> exactly. Well, I've just had a thought. In chapter nine, I could write that I've been shot. Well, you may not have to make that up if Drummond finds out about this. Oh, and intelligence has a C-E at the end of it, not a T-S. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> that was going to be the title. The Intelligence. You know, you, me, Lewis. How much longer is Lewis going to be, anyway? God knows. Where is he? He's in there. Number 16. That's number 8. Yes, I know. I was talking about the woman, not the house. She is number 16. How many's he got, then? Don't know. According to him, it's dozens, but your guess is as good as mine. Ooh, talk of the devil. Oh, I can't resist this. <laughs> that was a bit of a letdown, wasn't it? Look, I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. But well, it happens to other blokes as well. Yeah, not all the time. <laughs> it's gonna be like this might as well stick with me husband. Look, I'm sorry. Sometime next week. Mm, go on then. <laughs> sorry to keep you late. That's all right, Lewis. You weren't very long, anyway. <laughs> Just doing my bit for the environment. Oh, yeah. Well, I like to keep friendly with their ozos. Ozos. <laughs> Get it? Well, that's funny, because from what we've just heard, your only contribution to the environment is being... lead free. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I should get a pair of those. Hmm? Horn-rimmed glasses. What are you on about? I'm well, just wondering how I'd look in a white Mac and a pair of horn-rimmed glasses. Like a flasher on the common. Why? <laughs> well, you don't think I'd look a bit like Harry Palmer? Why do you want to look like Harry Palmer? Well, because I'm a... Sp <laughs> a, a great fan of, of Michael Caine. <clears throat> Not a lot of paper on that, actually. <laughs> have you seen this stupid film anyway oh it's not stupid it's good it's got drama intrigue suspense sue lloyd's chest you do better reading something like this it's got all of that well with the exception of sue lloyd's chest of course well it's a book is it there's no fooling you is there <laughs> i knew that university education would come in handy so what is it it's called the coldest of wars by richard stanhope it's a really fascinating document we're publishing it in a few weeks. Do you want a sneak preview? No, thanks. Please yourself. Just trying to expand your mind a bit, just so it vaguely fits your head. My mind fits beautifully, thank you. Just doesn't sound like my sort of book, that's all. No. 
And we all know your sort of book. What? The sort that falls open at the dirty bits when you drop it. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> not much. The type's always smudged where you've been drooling. <laughs> Go on, get back to your programme, my little couch potato. What? Look, I am not addicted to television, you know. I can take it or leave it. What? All right, look. I'm putting down the handset. <laughs> and now I shall go to the kitchen to make some coffee. Is that Sue Lloyd? Where? <laughs> you sure you got this right, Lewis? Ozones. That's right. I have the power. Now, it's more of a gift, really, to make beautiful women like you go, oh. <laughs> He lives in a little world of his own, doesn't he? You don't make me go, oh, Lewis. You make me go, bleh. <laughs> well, I think you might be losing this one, Lewis. Don't you believe it, Pete? She can't leave me alone. I mean, her god might be saying no, but I mean, the rest of her is saying, take me. I mean, she's just got to learn to read the body language. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think she's saying now, then? Search me, I think she's bloody mental. <laughs> April 26, the limousine swept out of Downing Street and whisked me back to Curzon Street so I could brief my men. Oh, hello, Hans Christian Andersen is back. <laughs> Another little gem from his book of fairy tales. No, 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 it's good, this bit. Have a look. The Krogers? Well, that was 1960. So? So, you can't have been more than nine or ten. I can't see the British public swallowing Dexter, the infant spy catcher, can you? <laughs> it's hardly credible, is it? A code book in one hand and a spud gun in the other. <laughs> no? Oh. Here, yeah, Pete, yeah. do you think I've got a boil coming here? What? I, I think I must have, because I can feel it under the skin. Well, if you have Truman, you ought to get Flint to squeeze it for you. She don't got a grip on her. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you lot? I've got Randy Andy, the ozone layer, over there. <laughs> I've got Mrs. Dale and her bloody diary over here, and now Spot's turned up. <laughs> Can't help it. I'll suffer with my health. We all suffer with your health, Truman. All right, now, pay attention, you lot. I want to go through your S10 reports. Randall, not bad. Hendricks, passable. Dexter, unintelligible, as usual. <laughs> Truman. Can we have it without the cartoon characters, please? Lewis, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Very, very disappointing. <laughs> you must get fed up with hearing that, Lewis. Uh, <laughs> right now, a silence. <laughs> some last... Sorry to crash in, Morris, but something has cropped up which affects everyone here. Do you mind? Oh, no, please do carry on, Andrew. <laughs> now, it's come to my attention that a book is planned which is going to blow the lid off this department. Now, quite apart from being in direct contravention of the Official Secrets Act, it's also a betrayal of our sacred trust. Now, obviously, its disclosures are likely to cause intense embarrassment in this department. What's more... <laughs> yes? It's me, sir. <laughs> well, yes, we can see it's you, Dexter. What do you want? No, 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 it's me, sir. I'm, I'm the man you want. What's he on about? I haven't a clue. You see, sir, I am keeping a diary which I plan to have published. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. oh, honestly, Dexter, a diary? I mean, who's going to be interested in your infantile ramblings? <laughs> so do sit down. Now, the real author of the book we're talking about is a former assistant director general, Richard Stanhope. The Coldest of Wars. Sorry, Pickley? The Coldest of Wars by Richard Stanhope. You know something about it? Well, it's just that my wife works for Grunemann Publishing and she told me they were publishing this book very soon. In fact, last night she was at home reading a copy of the manuscript. Was she indeed? What did it say about me? Never mind you. <laughs> what did it say about me? <laughs> Does it mention a most regrettable incident involving two Romanian females in Gibraltar? <laughs> I don't know, sir. I didn't read it. Didn't read it? You blithering idiot! Well, believe me, sir, I wanted to, but, um, she wouldn't let me. I see. Playing it a bit cagily. 
You better go and see your wife, Piglet. It's absolutely vital we know what's in that book. Well, couldn't you just hang on and buy a copy, sir? Be out in a few weeks. <laughs> It's all right, sir. I'll explain it to him. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. A book like this is simply not a viable proposition. No, I didn't keep it because I liked it. I kept it because I'm not allowed to send pornography like this through the post. Yes, I agree. The dialogue was graphic. Very graphic. As... as were the Polaroids. But I'm afraid... <laughs> if you want your manuscript back, you'll have to come and collect it yourself. I'll leave it in reception in a plain brown wrapper. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That is my final word. Goodbye. <sighs> Hi. This is a pleasant surprise. Hi. Yes, well, I was just passing. Wonder whether you fancy lunch. Well, not at 10.15, no. <laughs> right. Um, well, coffee and a sarnie. Well, I'm a bit busy at the moment. Right. OK. Can I help you? What? You remember Dexter? Ah, oh, yes, you work together, don't you? Yeah. At Radio Rentals. <laughs> Well, look, if you're busy, we'll leave you to it. Um, I'll see you this evening. Right. Bye. Bye. Oh, um, there was one thing, actually. Uh, that book you had last night, The, um, The Coldest of Wars? By Richard Stanhope. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I have a look at it? Why, has the television gone on the blink? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought, you know, you were, you were so impressed with it. Well, you're too late, I'm afraid. The marked-up copy's been sent back to the author. Right. Well, well, we'll be off. Anyway, bye. Bye. I'm writing a book, you know. Oh, yes? Perhaps you'd be interested in publishing it. I don't know. What's it called? The Secret Diary of Adrian Dexter, mental age six and three quarters. <laughs> <laughs> Everything ready to go here? Yeah? Well, nearly ready, sir. We're just waiting for our action man here to get into his outfit. I don't know why I've got to do this. Well, you're the only one who fitted the jacket. Quiet. Look here, Piglet, if the cap fits, wear it. <laughs> yes, but it's not that crucial to the operation. Now, you know what you have to do, don't you? Yes, sir. I've got to intercept the manuscript before it gets to Stanhope's front door. Very good. But well, couldn't all this have been done by an official intercept at the sorting office? Well, it should have been, but unfortunately, I gave the job to Truman. Get Stanhope's mail, I told him. Couldn't have made it any clearer. So what went wrong? Oh, he got the mail addressed to some chap called Stan Hope. <laughs> Apparently, Mr Hope runs a catalogue shopping operation. Thanks to Truman, I now have 57 sacks of mail sitting in my office. <laughs> well, poor old Truman, he's got a lot on his mind, sir. Yeah, that boiled for a start. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's got one intelligent head on his shoulder. <laughs> okay, come to the person now. Off you go, Piglet, and don't come back empty-handed. Postman feet, postman feet, postman feet with his eye ten feet. Shut up. <laughs> ah, hello. Morning. Parcel for Stanhope. Oh, I'll take that for you if you like, because I've got some letters to deliver anyway. <laughs> because I'm a, I'm a postman, you see. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, right. Bye-bye. Thank you, Postman. Morris. I was hoping we could nip this whole thing in the bud before the people upstairs got to find out about it. But it wasn't entirely my fault, Andrew. You see, the post office caught us on the hop. We weren't properly prepared. Oh? Yes, well, they delivered the package the very next day and on time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you don't expect that sort of efficiency from the post office, do you? Well, it won't do, Morris. We must get a look at Stanhope's book. The disclosures in it could cause us enormous damage. Well, it's all right for you. You're coming up for retirement. I'm not going just yet, Morris. Besides, what about my knighthood? But you haven't got a knighthood. Exactly. 
<laughs> Nor am I likely to get one if this damn book comes out. So what about me? I've got a meteoric career to think about. Well, it's likely to burn out unless something is done pretty damn quick. Oh, my God, I've just thought of something. What is it? You don't think that Stanhope would mention the Tricom defence cock-up, do you? Oh, I don't think he would be so uncharitable. Just because of a slight error of judgment when you overspent by 15 million pounds of the taxpayer's money? <laughs> You're a mere bagatelle in the grand scheme of things. But what about your slight error of judgment regarding the Celebari Republic of East Africa? I don't remember the incident. Oh, come <laughs> now, Andrew. Surely you must do. <laughs> I mean, don't you remember that you recommended the unlimited sale of arms to the Senabari government forces? And when they received them, they promptly declared independence and stormed the British Embassy? <laughs> yes, it does ring a distant bell. But Stanhope wouldn't mention it. Would he? Yes? Excuse me, sir. Oh, good, it's the postman. <laughs> I do hope you've got good news for me, Piglet. I'm afraid not, sir. According to my wife, Stanhope's manuscript arrived back at Grumman Publishing this morning. It's going down for final editing, so there's no reason for Sarah to bring it back home again, and there's not really much more I can do. Not much? Oh, now, listen to me, Piglet. This book could mean big trouble. We could have the Security Services Commission breathing down our necks. Flack from the Home Secretary. Questions in the House. We might even have to justify our actions to you-know-who. Esther Ranson. The Prime Minister! <laughs> well, what more can we do? Uh, well, I'm sure we can think of something. <laughs> now, you're sure you've got the right building this time? Don't <laughs> worry. That was an easy mistake to make. The buildings looked identical. Identical? They had a great bloody sign up saying coach and horses. <laughs> Yeah, but that was over the front door. We were around the back. That's true. Mind you, I did wonder about all those crates and beer barrels in the yard, didn't you? <laughs> no, not really. I thought, well, you know what they're like in publishing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where's Pete? He said he'd meet us here with Flint. He's probably got fed up and gone home. Right, let's get on with this. <laughs> My local garage. <laughs> but what do you want for three pounds eighty? I'll give it another go. <laughs> John, work to do. How did you get inside? I borrowed Sarah's keys. Now hurry up and get in. Right. The door, dummies. <laughs> Tasty by a torch, <laughs> How very Alfred Lord Tennyson. <laughs> just give it a rest, Lewis. Well, I was just saying how lovely you looked in subdued lighting. That's all. And you look lovely in subdued lighting, too. Or better still, no lighting at all. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? You pay a bird a compliment. And you are like a bloody husky, you are, Lewis. You're never happier than when you're pulling. <laughs> Somebody has switched the point and there is an express coming through. It's going to be carnage. <laughs> Today, boys and girls, we're looking through the publisher's window. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. You never tell me your wife's firm published Percy the Puffer Train. I've never seen this one before. I'll have to go out and buy it. I didn't know you had toddlers, Dexter. I haven't. <laughs> Look, much as I'm enjoying our book at bedtime, we have got work to do. Can we just get on with it? Hey, Pete. Is this it? 
Yes, Collis of Wars, Richard Stanhope. Right. Now, where's the photocopier? So it all went all right last night? Yeah, fine. Well, apart from old Jack and Nori features here. <laughs> it was half an hour extra to tidy up, thanks to him. Why? What happened? <sighs> oh, it'd take too long to explain. You'll have to wait and read about it in my memoirs. <laughs> <laughs> Still, at least we got what Drummond wanted. A copy of the manuscript. I wonder if there was anything in it to incriminate him. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. No. <laughs> well, good morning, one and all. What a lovely day. Oh, Truman, now what is that on your cheek? It's a plaster, sir. Well, it's nowhere near big enough, Truman. I can still see your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only joking, Truman, only joking. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, heartiest congratulations to all those involved in last night's little raid. Do we take it there was nothing about you in the book, sir? There was nothing in it about any of us, Piglet. In fact, Stanhope's book wasn't even about the security services. <laughs> but the title, The Coldest of Wars? Yes, the Crimea, Piglet. It was an historical work. <laughs> yes, who would have thought it, eh? There we all were, running around, worrying about what he might have said about us. But all the time, the people he was really talking about were Palmerston, Pitt, and Florence Nightingale. Is that going to get them into trouble, sir? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not even your inane ramblings are going to spoil my day, Dexter. In fact, I'm inviting all those involved to join me for drinks at my club. Shall we say 6.30? Thank you. That's all. Toodaloo. <laughs> Oh. That was Drummond, wasn't it? I think so. What was that thing on his face? A smile. <laughs> it was chilling, wasn't it? <laughs> Nina, Nina, went the siren on the police car. Squeal! <laughs> went the tyres as it tore round the corner. Hurrah! Shouted a crowd as Inspector Chundley arrived on the scene. What do you think so far? Well, it's all right, but you've got to realise there's a lot of competition in the world of children's books. It's not a children's book, it's his memoirs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a real knicker gripper. I'm taking the lid off MI5. Mm, in pop-up form. <laughs> MI5? Why would you want to write about a subject like that? <laughs> It's more uh, an adventure novel, really. Oh, that reminds me. I've bought you a present. You said you wanted to read it. Oh, the coldest of wars. Great. Oh, give it a chance. You'll enjoy it. She writes very well. Sorry, she? <laughs> Who's she? Richard Stanhope. Well, it's a pen name, of course. Her real name's Iris McNee. <laughs> really? A woman? <laughs> I wish I'd known that sooner. Yes. Well, Iris feels that for this sort of subject, a man's name always carries more weight. I'll bet. Oh, you've forgotten the milk. I'll get it. Actually, her pen name's causing us a bit of a problem at the moment. You see, we've just signed an author whose real name's Richard Stanhope. Funnily enough, he's taking the lid off MI5 as well. <laughs> Bloody hell! <laughs> 